Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're out at Stanford Stadium for the California Classico, the showdown between the San Jose Earthquakes and the LA Galaxy, the fourth year of this contest. And really, it's a great festival for soccer in the Bay Area. They're expecting a sellout crowd, 55,000 people, really leveraging off what's going on at the World Cup. And we're here, like we always do, to go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, talk to the smartest people we can find, and really learn about what tech is going on and how tech is being used to really increase the uh, fan experience, uh, elevate the fan experience. So I'm here with, with uh, Olivia Coran, digital marketing strategist, and I imagine you do more than strategy, but a whole lot of execution too. <laughs> exactly. So uh, are you excited? You said this is your second California this is my Classico. second California Classico. It's the best game I, of the year, I think. Um, I'm really excited. Go Quakes. Go Quakes. Yeah. So you're the one that has to actually implement a lot of this crazy social stuff that people yeah, talk about. But it's so, the most fun job out there. So talk about some of the things that you got going on for uh, for tonight's game. Yeah, well tonight we're doing um, a thing through a company called Tagboard. And so everyone who tags their tweets and Instagrams using Quake 74 has a chance of getting on our video board during the match. Um, it's just a way that we can kind of increase and capitalize on the emotion of the soccer game and really capitalize on that fan engagement. So what, what's the experience of people actively tweeting during a game that you've seen in other games? I mean, what percentage of it is people kind of in stadium versus not? Can you give us, share this any kind of frequency or, yeah. or, or what that really does for people? Right. Well, inherently people love to share their experiences and that's why social media is so wonderful is that they can say hey I'm at this amazing soccer game right now I'm at Stanford Stadium watching the Quakes beat the Galaxy and so just having the scoreboard and having that way of kind of implementing and having a way that people can see themselves on the scoreboard is great for us. Right. The sun is killing me here I'm like ah. <laughs> so, so Twitter's one channel right there's a lot of other social channels so talk about what some of the other social channels that you yeah. use and how do you delineate kind of either what type of content do you do per or do you do it all the same just on different channels? How do you kind of organize your efforts around the different channels? Right, well we obviously we do Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are big ones. We also um, are active on Google Plus because Google Glass, um, our president Dave Cavill has a pair and so we like to use that as much as possible. Will you be wearing um, those today? No, I will not be wearing those today <laughs> but hopefully um, in the future we'll be able to kind of incorporate that in our game day experience. Um, but really those, those three, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook are where we see the most engagement and um, where we try to attract and kind of create a voice for the club, which is really my job too, is kind of creating that voice that fans can attach themselves the to. The voice of the club, mm -hmm. right through those channels. Now, you talked about before we turn on the camera that the MLS crowd is the most engaged a fan base of any sport. I wonder if you could elaborate on that. How do you define that? What is What do you define engagement as? Because that's a really good question. Everybody wants to engage with their audience, but how do you define engagement and how do you measure engagement? Right. Well, um, I mean, obviously there's lots of lots of different tools that we can measure engagement. Um, engagement is who's interacting with us on a post. And so um, MLS, there is some st crazy stat out there that obviously the fan base of MLS is a lot younger than different sports leagues. Um, and so it's really that 18 to 33 year old crowd okay. that is engaging with us and so um, we there is some crazy stat that we are of the highest engagement I can't name it right now <laughs> and I don't know if the Portland and Seattle fa fans are gonna go with Dave's comment that 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 that's the cool. biggest uh, rivalry here but I, I do think it's interesting because I grew up in Portland and mm -hmm. I in my kind of uh, view it's like Portland and Seattle are almost a great rivalry because they're so similar right and here you've got LA and San Francisco which is a great rivalry because they're so different even within the same state oh absolutely and kind of having that no, I'm not from California personally but having that north versus south thing and also with the Sharks this year and the Kings kind of capitalizing on that rivalry and sure. it's all an emotional experience for people and just social is a way to integrate that and to kind of use that as a tool to rally people behind the cause. Right, right. So speaking of emotion, right, we all took Thursday off of work Thursday morning to watch the you know the, uh, the 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 game down in Brazil. How has this World Cup thing impacted your business and what you guys have going on with the earthquakes? Oh, we've seen huge growth on social. Um, our Twitter followers have increased since June 12th, since about for about 10 percent. Um, and just people just want to, they are eating up soccer. And so ways that we can integrate ourselves in that conversation um, has really, we've really seen benefits from that. And obviously in the office, we love it too. We get to watch soccer all day and you know, World Cup is a great excuse to go to work. Right. And then the other thing that you guys have that's pretty unique, like we talked to Dave a little bit, is you keep jumping homes. You're like the nomads of the Bay yeah. Area sports franchises. 
you know, we, we last talked to David at AT&T Park, which is a very progressive park in terms of technology and fan experience. Now you guys are here at Stanford, really the heart of many of the Silicon Valley's biggest companies. Next, we can't wait. You guys are going to actually open Levi's yeah. Stadium, which should be one of the more innovative stadiums in the entire country, if not world, in terms of the way they're trying to use technology to change their fan experience. And then you're building your own stadium Absolutely. next to San Jose. So talk about the specific challenges of not necessarily having a home, but trying to recreate these intimate experiences and a special fan experience across all these different venues. Yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously, at, we're playing at Buckshaw right now, so they don't have the capabilities to, you know, show tweets on a scoreboard or do anything like that. But by using Stanford and also going to Levi's, we can see what technologies really work there and then use them in our new stadium. So we have a lot of great plans for kind of digital activation within our new stadium um, so we can have that create that fan experience that we don't get at Buckshaw right now. Right. And the last thing I just want to ask you, because you said you're relatively new to the earthquake, you've been here a year, um, and, and you know, people are always talking about innovation. How do we foster a culture of innovation? How do we get our people to innovate? How do we get them to come up with new stuff? So, so in your experience, and it sounds like obviously the earthquakes are cutting edge, what are some of the special things that happen here that enable you guys to take risks, to innovate, to do some things that nobody else is doing? Oh, right. Well. I mean, Dave Cavill is a wonderful president, and he's always thinking of the next best thing that we can do. And also, being in this, being in the Silicon Valley, is that we get, we have the companies come up to us, and they want to work with us. Um, and so, we kind of get a, our choice and to see what will really work well within our organization and also for our fan base. Um, and so there's never a lack of different ideas coming at us or different ways that different new social integration tools or different ways to measure our engagement. So it's been wonderful coming awesome. here. Yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> Th enthusiastic workers, enthusiastic innovation, enthusiastic crowd. So again, I'm Jeff Frick. We're at the Cube here with Olivia. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to cruise around the whole game. We're going to check out Olivia, filtering those uh, those tweets to see what goes up on the board. We'll be down on the field. We're going to be in the stands. We're going to talk to as many people as we can to try to tell you what's going on here and bring a little bit of the experience and technology and social media and how they're using that to enhance the Quakes experience. So I'm